Williams, Jost, head to head. Oh my God, dude. I know. Oh my God. The unveiling. There it is. Got the play field, got the plastics, got the cabinet. It's just up to you to put it all together. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Yo, yeah, what's up boys and girls? Today's Friday. I just peeled myself off the couch. I was trying to go for a nap. Wasn't having much luck. So, instead, I'm going over to the Grazley Garage. Got something special in store for y'all today. I guess, maybe just yesterday? fellow by the name of Rob Edwards. I think I said that, I think I got that right. Rob Edwards, yeah. He brought Kevin a pretty rare, unique, and awesome machine. Judging by the title of this video, I'm sure you know that it is a 1983 Williams head-to-head -head joust machine. Whoa, what? Road closed? That wasn't closed friggin two hours ago when I went and got Jamie a coffee <clears throat> so I'll have to divert now we got the friggin London Transit Company blocking the whole road here this is fun it's not even rush hour it's like three o'clock I am so cocked blocked right now this is getting dumb okay so Rob Edwards dropped off a 1983 head-to-head -head Williams Joust machine. Now, if you never heard of that, it's because they're friggin' extremely rare. They only made 402 of them, and who knows how many are actually still, you know, left. I saw one at Vintage Flipper World, Clay Harrell's Place, Ann Arbor, Pinball Museum, VFW, whatever you call it, and I remember one of his technicians was working on it, and I was kind of just, it was, you know, when I was getting into repairing myself, so I was curious and fascinated and kind of asking him a couple questions, but I don't think I actually got to play it. What is going on here? Holy crap, it's going to take me an hour to drive 10 minutes. This is insanity. Okay, so, you know... I was doing a little bit of research and this Joust game was originally going to come out as a game called just Generic Conflict, but Williams made a smart decision to coincide it with the 1981 release of the arcade game Joust, so they themed it Joust and it came out in 1983. So. Apparently there are a couple sort of versions or variations out there. There's mostly just minor differences. Like one has like a blue and black apron. The other has a black and red apron. And the other one has like kind of rounded feet and the other has squared off feet. Something to do with the inserts and whatnot. I don't know which variation this is or if I had even recognize it, but I wanted to do a little bit of research before checking out this machine and have some idea of what I'm talking about I think Kevin already has it sort of torn apart I think he's got the boards ready to go to Brent and so this is also pretty awesome he has got a new play field for it and new plastic set so Kevin is probably going to take on the full restoration he doesn't really love doing playfield swaps, especially after the last World Cup, World Crap Soccer incident. But this is just kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity to work on a super rare machine and turn it into one of the probably nicest examples out there. So that's what's in store for today. We're gonna have a peek at that, kind of see what state it's in right now because Kevin works effing fast. Also, Rob Ellison, different Rob, his Star Trek 
is over at the garage and I just saw a couple photos and it has now officially got its powder coating installed. So it is looking pretty sweet. And as I'm driving over to Kevin's, which is gonna take me an hour to drive 10 minutes at this rate, actually it's kind of cleared up now. Um, he is currently, as I speak, installing the powder coating for my whirlwind. And there's something else. I know I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know, I think Rolling Stones is still there. But uh, yeah, Whirlwind should be ready to go. Then um, probably bring it into the arcade and it'll be ready for its photo shoot. I can take some pics and put it up for sale. I don't know, maybe it'll look so nice in the arcade we might want to hang onto it for a bit and just kind of play it, but we'll see. Uh, I don't really like talking about deals that haven't happened yet, but maybe by the time I post this video, it wouldn't have mattered. It's the like, you don't want to jinx the deal, but Kevin is working on a deal that might involve possibly a World Cup soccer and a party zone in trade for an Elvira House of Horrors. So they've been negotiating back and forth with this uh, dude named Adam Hewer, who we've dealt with before and wheeled and dealed with, wheeled and dealed? Welt and dealt? Anyway, <laughs> didn't come to a, uh, he, he really wants my uh, restored white water and she's always trying to like offer me something for my white water, but I'm just not ready to let it go. Although he offers me very fair trades, but if this pans out, then I get to keep my white water and I still get to play the Elvira House of Horrors. And it'll be Kevin's first LCD game. That guy is almost drove into me. That's why I was cringing there. So there's that going on. And um, I don't know, I feel like I'm missing something else. Uh, whatever, we'll find out when we get there. I've blathered on long enough, so we'll see you at the garage. It was just a few days ago that I was here where I found Kevin shoveling off this very roof but a lot of the snow has melted now. So no Kevin on the roof this time. Let's see what we got going on in here. It's always fun stuff. Oh, I'm learning how to close this gate, I promise. There we go. Hello? Yes, I'm talking to myself out here. Ooh, gonna have to zoom out to see all the awesomeness that is happening in the garage. Oh, there he is. I was wondering if you were hiding somewhere. Okay, wow. I need to um, start by taking off my coat. All right, here's the Star Trek. I had a sneak peek while I was taking my coat off. And this looks amazing. Rob, yeah, that was a good decision to do this because it looks beautiful. Your cabinet... It is basically perfect condition. Kevin pulled off this tea molding, brought it to the powder coater to, ma to match it, and he did a great job. And Kevin just told me that he even um, drilled out all these rivets, pulled off this plaque, because this plaque you said was blue. Yep. And the lock bar was black. The, yeah, so it was reversed. Lock bar was black, this was blue. Pulled off this plaque um, and had it powder coated black, so it looks friggin' amazing. Shooter housing, legs, the usual. But yeah, and this play field, you know, has been routed fairly hard, but it's gonna come out probably perfect. I don't see any wear spots, but definitely these rubbers uh, could. Probably almost just to pull them off. They're like oh, falling are, to bits. Some are flat. And oh yeah. And... and is that what's going on there? Oh yeah. Damn, that's gonna look amazing. This will be uh... have the side blades for it too. The... Oh, art blades, yeah. sweet. Yeah, man. This is uh... Rob's gonna be stoked about this. Kept the bolts black because it looks awesome. Very nice. Okay, hey, there's my traditional knocking into something. Fortunately, it was just that this time. 
Okay, here's my whirlwind. Let's have a look at this. I see white legs so far. That's as far as we got. Okay. I'll, I'll leash up on the sawhorses. Yeah, sweet. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I just gotta like edit out every trip that I've ever done in the Gracie garage and gotta, it'd be like a 20 minute video. You gotta add them, like, you gotta add them, you gotta, like, add them like a compilation. Yeah, exactly. A compilation Super of cluts. Funny. Oh, hey, don't be looking at that, that over there just yet. But nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Yours truly got it for me. Yeah. Okay, so here's kind of, get a little bit of the before, the powder coating. Okay, so we've got the legs and leg protectors installed thus far. And then um, here's the rest. We'll install that and then we'll have another look at the finished product. But yeah, this is what? The pearl white or? Yeah. So wheat. White and then they put pearl in the clear. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, so it's just like a two step process. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so now we gotta head around to this bad boy here. Here's your here's your 1983 Williams Joust head to head. So you've you got it like fully intact, but you've already started tearing it apart. This is the way it came. It, this is the way it came. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was Rob brought it. Uh, Rob Edwards. Yeah. Uh, he brought it, but he had to take it apart to get it into his. Vehicle. Okay. Hey, is there in the photos on the internet? There's like some legs that protrude it. Oh, okay. So those are the legs. So there's discussion of two different versions. Eh? Some with the rounded legs and some with the squared off legs. Rounded is cooler. Rounded is cooler. This looks like somebody's painted these legs. And do you think this T molding is original? I think T molding is originally. Um, Rob. Did paint the legs, and then we came to the legs. Yeah. And then these, I guess, are the lock bars. Yeah. Look like they're original, so that's pretty cool. Those glass okay. This is fascinating. I love this kind of stuff. Got coin doors, access doors. Oh, is there? Um, oh, wow. Like other access doors from that pop outside here. Right. And then, like, the speakers come out there. And they got your marquee right here. And then there's the serial number. Rob, if you want to input that into the internet pinball serial number database, then you can join the Joust Club. I looked it up, and uh, yours wasn't registered yet, so yours is unknown to the database. Okay. Interesting. It's very much like... An oversized cocktail machine, eh? Yeah. And that's just for the coin box. There's some diagrams here. I think I saw that on Internet Pinball Database. Whoa, look at the size of that capacitor. Holy crepes. I wonder if there's any information on in this machine that is not already documented. I mean... Probably not, but because there are a number of them registered and they did make 400. So, I mean, who made Algar? That was Williams too, right? They made only 349 of those, so it's even rarer. But for some reason, Algar is like rampant in uh, Ontario. So it's kind of weird how some rare games are rarer than other rare games. In certain areas. Yeah, I guess it uh, can be... Um, geographical. So, here's the play field. So this is not the new one, obviously. No, the new one's in the shop. Ah, okay. And your plastic set and all the reconditioned boards. The boards are already reconditioned? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought you pulled them. So he got, did he get Brent into them? Yeah. Smart man. So this would just be your, your regular System 7 um, board set, so nothing too fancy, uh, and even the displays are, you know, standard. There's nothing really, I don't know, proprietary about this game. It's all Williams parts and Williams board set. 
So there's also talk on the Internet Pinball Database about the difference between the black and red apron and the blue and black apron. There's actually, I don't know if you read anything, but there's like two different versions of this with subtle differences. And um, the apron is one of them. And something to do with like some inserts are opaque and faceted. Some are clear and not faceted depending on what version it is. But this is freaking cool. Let's see what the backside looks like. Oh my God, dude. I know. Oh my god, holy shit. Um, I thought after you did World Crap Soccer that anything you did after that would be a cinch. I take that back. Yeah, right. This is about as fucking packed as you can get. Um, holy no. shit. I've now that I've unblanketed it, I'm not that keen. <laughs> yeah, might you, uh, might you reconsider? Yeah, I'm probably still doing it. Yeah, you... You're you're a madman like that, and like we said, this is this is not something you get to do uh, maybe ever. So this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Ooh, new parts stuff. I'm going into that box. Damn right. Yeah, original manual. Super cool. Let's see, does this have the rounded or the squared off legs? I think that looks like squared off legs. Very minor detail, but okay. So, um, beer, seal. beer seal for the lock bars. What else? We got flipper buttons, uh, new drop targets, rubber set. Ah, uh, oh, I see. Okay, a couple targets, rebuild kits, locks. Miscellaneous hardwares. Very friggin' cool. Okay, put that back for now. And where's the plastic set? In the other room? Okay. Uh, room aka arcade full of pinball machines. <laughs> Cannot just be called a room. Alright, so... Yeah, this is the, uh, the joust. Have I pretty much seen everything that needs to be seen? These marquees. So we got a... Yellow and a blue guy on this side. Same over here. It is the same? Okay. On this side. So are both sides identical? Oh no, because you got the coin. Yeah, so this is basically the front. Cool, man. This will be pretty friggin' epic. It'll be a lot of work. Yes. I hope you charge Rob like $10,000 to do this. <laughs> But yeah, man, this will be, uh, this will take up a, a few hours of your time, but you, you don't operate by normal time. You somehow have like three days for every normal day somehow. Anyway. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. All right, man. I wish you luck on that. Should we go take a peek at the new playfield and plastics? Yeah. Corey thinks you pretty much have the ability to stop time. Ooh. Every time I see this Dracula, can't help but gawk at it. Ah, this is fun. So, where did this playfield come from? Uh, this is Mirko. It's a Mirko. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I don't capture anybody's address here. It looks pretty good. So, yeah, here it is. The unboxing. I wonder how many uh, playfields Mirko did for Joust, or if this is like a one-off, or or what. But so I don't know how Mirko works. If he does bulk runs or print to order kind of thing. This is uh. Not your typical play field because it's sloped in the middle. It's got special brackets. It's pretty freaking cool. All right. The unveiling. 
Ooh, that's nice. Oh my god. There it is. Mirko Playfields. Thank you, Mirko, for existing. We all appreciate you. Dang, that's nice. That is beautiful. Do you get to keep the old playfield? Did you have that discussion yet? He wants to have everything back. Ah, damn it. <laughs> that was worth a shot. Oh, that is amazing. It makes it a little more uh, exciting to populate this thing, eh? Won't you see this? It's like, yeah, a little more motivating. Beautiful. Wow. We're going to get a full view. All right, let's bust open the other box of goodies. That is one big-ass box for plastics. I think it's the, like, like every plastic, the marquees and everything. Oh, sweet. We might have to talk Rob out of the marquees on the old one. I know. One for me, one for you. Oh, you know what? I bet you this box is so big because a back glass came in here too. Oh, or maybe not. Maybe it's oh yeah, just those, the sheer size of these yeah, plastics. Those are the ones that need to be like bent. Oh, how do you do that? I'm not sure yet. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's the new marquees. Well, let's bust that open. Might as well. We've come this far. Because we said the dude was yellow and blue, but there's obviously a protective coating on that, so yellow dude looks a little green right now. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Oh. I'm taking that. Just kidding. I'm not. No, oh, yeah. Oh, I know. What are they riding? Ostriches? Is that what it is? Yeah. So these are ostrich uh, claws. <laughs> Those are cool. Oh, another promo plastic. Dang, there's tons. Wow. Watch this. Oh, oh, it's a, that's a joke. dude. Oh, there they are. Yeah, joasting together. Oh, mm -hmm. lots of joast characters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so this film is already removed? No, this uh -oh. is clear. That one's the blue. Yeah, okay. Sweet. Okay. That is exciting, dude. Yep, there it is. Okay, well. Oh, I love those. And are these uh, CPR then? Did it say? I don't remember. Oh well, but there it is. Got the play field, got the plastics, got the cabinet. It's just up to you to put it all together. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, man. All right, let's go uh, put some uh, Whirlwind together. All right, one side is done on Whirlwind. The flipper button's in, side rail, hinge. You polished my bolt, man? I did. Damn, that's right, awesome. And this one too? Sweet. But I'm like, hey, it is on Doctor Who as well, and does. This <laughs> is the secret recipe right here. Passed down from Grazley Generations. I thought that was the first crispy generation. Corners. <laughs> that oh yeah, the crispy corners. That's that as well. Okay, like you've done this so much now that you don't. You just away you go. I want to see the action though. If it's boring, if it's boring, I'll just uh, time lapse it. This will be the time that I screw yeah. this all up. All right, time lapse time, possibly. Why? What do you got to do here? Just okay. peel off the one layer. Yeah, but. Secret is you can't go too close to this, otherwise it puts a kink in everything. So the bolt has to go in there. You can't go across the flipper button. And, uh, right. I found that with doing the other rails. If you come all the way up and then you put the bolt in, the rail's got like a kink to the thickness of the... Ew. So you have to kind of stay back so it's gradual and you don't notice. Gotcha. Because you're adding that extra little bit of thickness there. Yeah. All right. So this is the part like that scares me because you're saying if you... Like I was going to do this myself, potentially, initially. Yeah. So then you're telling me that about that there's, you know, you can't just a like, trick to this. Oh, crap. This Here, I can get that. You got it? Dutch? Dutch to the rescue. Right, I'll it. come around to this Never side. Mind. I'm too late. But you can't just put it on there, otherwise this won't line up. And you can't, you have to go over this so that it's not stuck up. 
So you kind of have to, you can see the, the difference in the blue between the before and after too, yeah. pretty good there. So you kinda, okay. You kind of have to put it in. You start with but, the yeah, bolt. Just, just to make sure you know where it is lined up. Yeah. Then you have to go over. Oh, do you want me to hold down? No, that's okay. And then, but you have to make sure it goes over and then stick it against. Just like that, you see, you make it look so easy. I bet you if I tried that, I would have screwed it up by now and I'd be peeling it off and peeling up the wood with it because you use heavy duty double sided tape, right? Yeah. So, so you, you can't really screw that up or else you will have troubles, right? Yes. Yeah. There it is, that, just like that. Beauty. It's like I've done this 50 <laughs> times or yeah, more. 50 times in 2023 <laughs> alone. All right. Well, we'll be back with the rest. All right. We just kind of half slapped uh, the play field in, and stuck the legs, side rails, and lock bars on just to see what it looks like. That looks so much cooler when it's actually assembled. No need to put on the glass, but yeah, so you got to duke it out against your opponent through the spinner to knock it to the other guy. I wonder if you can go through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like you can get the ball. This way. Send it to your opponent through the left side. Yeah. Look at the way it plunges up. Plunges both almost this way. Oh, that's cool. So you plunge all the way down there right to the flipper. So if you're not paying attention, it'll probably just drain or maybe bounce off the tip and out if you're lucky. And same for the other player. That's freaking cool. Okay. We need to do a photo of this game. So just looking at this one plastic a little closer, it actually bends up, right? I mean, I don't think you're going to have to put that bend in there, but then somehow you need to bend this down. And this is, so if anybody knows how to bend that new plastic into this shape easily, Without destroying it, let us know. Look what's coming into the arcade. Hey, don't be playing any licensed music, Dracula. All right, we're gonna set this up and take a closer look. Hinges are looking pretty nice. Yeah. So, you know, before I decided to sell this, I thought, Let's throw on a little bit more lipstick because that white powder coating on the other one you did just looks so awesome. I mean, the beauty of this powder coating kind of highlights the imperfections of the cabinet, but hey, if I don't point it out, nobody will ever notice. This is no, this is no Grazley cabinet job. This is a Mike D cabinet job. Here's the difference. I just take some blue paint that's somewhat close to matching and I just roll over everything, including the friggin' uh, what you- I wouldn't say everything. <laughs> yeah, the warning label. And here's X corners. Yeah, not quite the same. Roller. X over. corners. Didn't roll over this. No, I didn't do much to the side. I just did basically all the back and outside of all the art and touched up the art a little bit. I believe it was a while ago, but yeah, let's turn it on too. See what it looks like in full effect. Yeah, it was a while ago. I did the full play field. I did a lot of work to this guy. Literally rebuilt every single mechanism. Oh shit! Stepping on shit again. That one. That one was Dutch's fault. You wanted, you wanted to plug it in. Ooh, the glass channel. Yeah, that's nice. And then Kevin painted this topper for me at one point. And this may be the first time actually seeing it in action. There we go. It is in. It's official. Okay, well, there she is. Thank you for uh, your services, kind sir. No problem, man. Uh, appreciate you lending a hand because I would have certainly screwed stuff up, especially with the side rails. But, all right, I gotta take some photos and get this thing uh, listed. <laughs>
You that guys are ridiculous. That. It would be a good photo, I'm sure, out of all that crap. Oh, you guys want to try one too? No. <laughs> yeah, get in there, Dutch. No. Oh, no. You can't make me. Alright, fine. I have taped myself to Rolling Stones. You can't make me. You're stuck.